Hello lovely people, my name is Dr. Harry Akwa. Today we will be looking into understanding genotype compatibility before you say I do. All around us we see people falling in love and getting married. It's a good thing. It's lovely. It's one of the best things that could happen to people around you. However, what goes into making this lifetime commitment? A whole lot of questions are raised after marriage. Does it end there? What happens? How would our children come out? And what would be the fate of the children we bring forth? And majority of these tend to fall on our decisions with regards to who we align our future with. Hence the topic understanding genotype compatibility before you say I do. Shall we have a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for today. It is our prayer that you help us understand the concept of genotype compatibility. Bless us with the gift of understanding so we don't falter when it comes to you choosing a life partner. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So in choosing a life partner, there is a crucial decision that comes to play. Many a big man, many a prominent man has fallen simply because of the life partner they chose. A number of decent women have had their life in tatters simply because they chose wrong. We usually focus on love and shared faith, which is very important. However, there is a key aspect that often gets overlooked, and that is genotype compatibility. In this video, we are going to look at what genotype compatibility is, and why we should care about it, and how we can approach this sensitive topic from a Christian perspective. Now, the genotype of an individual is a chemical composition of their DNA, which gives rise to the physical and observable traits and these, most of the time, are inherited from parents. For instance, the blood type, the eye color, the color of your hair, the tendency to have um, a receding hairline in future, or even your height. There are, there are more. Now, when it comes to blood, there are two common types of biological characteristics that play a crucial role in determining the various aspects of human health and compatibility to every individual. These include the blood group, typically the ABO grouping as well as the resource grouping, which is not often talked about but also very important. And the second one being the genotype when we refer to sickle cell disease in particular. So the question is, what is genotype? Genotype is the genetic makeup of the cells of humans based on the type of hemoglobin present in the red blood cells. Now, in fact, when we talk about genotype here, we are making reference to sickle cell and what um, comes along with it. Genotype in general simply refers to the genetic makeup of an individual. But genotype in reference to sickle cell disease has to do with the genetic makeup of um, the cells of the individual with reference to sickle cell disease. Now, there are many of these genotypes in question. The common types around include AA, AC, AF, AS, SC, SS, CC, the thalassemia traits, which include beta and alpha thalassemia, as well as the other not so common ones. Now, I believe at this point, people are asking, what are these uh, letters this gentleman is talking about? Now, for every healthy individual, the predominant genotype in your body with reference to sickling is the A, and we call it the adult hemoglobin. Now, these genotypes determine the structure and the 
characteristic of the hemoglobin you are going to produce as a person. So the question is, what is hemoglobin? Now, whenever you take anybody's blood, in the blood, there is a liquid part and then there's the cellular part. The liquid part is known as plasma. The cellular part, we have the red blood cells, we have the white blood cells and the platelets, which technically are not cells, but they are cell remnants. Now the red blood cells contains hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen. And whenever hemoglobin carries oxygen, the color is red, hence the color of blood being red. Now there are different types of hemoglobin. We have hemoglobin A, which is the adult hemoglobin. And that is a predominant type of hemoglobin in, an, in a healthy adult. We also have hemoglobin F, which is the fetal hemoglobin. Now, what happens with fetal hemoglobin is that anytime someone um, within in the womb, you have the predominant hemoglobin being the fetal hemoglobin. It has unique characteristics that would help the hemoglobin carry oxygen even when there is shortage and loosen it when it's supposed to. Now we also have another type, which is the hemoglobin C. It's a different type, it's abnormal. And then you have what we are concerned about, which is hemoglobin S, also known as the sickled hemoglobin. Now, for you to have sickle cell disease, you need two copies of the S. You need at least one S and another abnormal hemoglobin. So you could have hemoglobin, you could have a genotype of AS. That doesn't necessarily mean you have sickle cell disease. Because as, as explained, you need one S and another abnormal hemoglobin. Thus, what is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease simply means you have one S and another abnormal hemoglobin. So you could have SS, which refers to sickle cell anemia, or SC which is a type of sickle cell disease, or SF, which is another type of sickle cell disease, or S-beta thalassemia, which is another type of sickle cell disease. That said, when you have one S and an A, we refer to that as sickle cell traits. So why does it matter knowing your genotype? Now, genotype helps with the study of inheritance patterns of genes. It also helps in understanding the risk of developing certain genetic disorders. Genotype influences the likelihood of passing on genetic traits to your offspring. And the knowledge of genotype allows for genetic counseling before marriage or pregnancy, which is the crux of our discussion today. Genotypes can affect how an individual responds to medication. So recognizing these differences helps doctors tailor treatments to each patient for better results. Uh, the importance of our discussion hinges on the fourth point, which is knowledge of genotype allows for genetic counseling before marriage or pregnancy. So then, what does it mean to be compatible genetically? What we are trying to say in summary is this, that do you have a partner who has the genotype AS or SS? If you are someone with this genotype and you are well aware, who do you go along with? Because it is not a question of who you love. It is a question of which children you are likely to bring forth. And that is the whole concept of genetic compatibility. The one that is AS or SS, we are not saying you are bad from having a, pa um, a partner who is AS or SS, but it is a question of throwing the, your offspring, its future to chance. And that is why genetic compatibility is important. 
The Bible encourages us to seek wisdom and understanding in all aspects of life, including relationships. As said in Proverbs 4 verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. When it comes to marriage, we must make informed decisions that balance our faith with practical considerations like health. Just as we trust in God for guidance, we should also trust him to give us wisdom to make sound decisions. So in summary, if you are in a relationship or considering marriage, it is crucial to discuss genotypes early. And when we say genotype, we are talking about sickle cell genotype. Get tested and share your results with your partner. If there is a risk of any hereditary illness, seek premarital counseling to explore your options and to make informed decisions together. Many couples also find it helpful to speak with a genetic counselor. Remember, these decisions should be based in prayer, guided by both spiritual and medical advice.